Welcome back guys to another exciting episode where I'm currently going through all the water blocks I have made in the past. This time we have um, quite a big change for me. It's the first single 62mm block I made and this time I had converted my milling machine to a fully automated CNC so there's no more painful arms of trying to turn the knobs and spray the <laughs> coolant um, I've also got a coolant pump. This uh, is milled out of my standard issue. It's actually 12.5 mil copper, but when it's milled, it's about 10 mil. I have uh, the cold coming in the center and coming out the edges to ensure there's no, well, there's as little gradient across the block as possible. It has three inlet channels, uh, which is double because you've got half them going up the block and half them going down or left across the block and right across the block depending on how you're looking at it. Um, this turned out to be not the best choice because if you worked out the area of all of those slots which was 6 by uh, 3 by um, about 8 I guess, um, that area ended up being far greater than the than the area of the barb entering the block. So that meant that the velocity along each one of the channels was less than the velocity through the narrowest part of the barb. And velocity is very important. So I uh, made the block, I believe, more restrictive in an attempt to increase velocity, which would increase cooling. However, at the time, this thing was just awesome. In comparative to anything I'd done before and, and in comparison to anything which I believed was around at the time, this thing was just fantastic. I have it here next to a DTEC water block, which was at the time a great water block just for cooling CPUs. And it's actually a bit hard to see because you can't tell the height difference, but that is significantly larger my water block than a normal water block. And you'll also notice that there is a bit missing off the uh, top corner of my water block. Um, that was where the milling machine decided to do its own thing. Uh, I found the reliability of milling machines to be a significant problem and why there are hundreds of thousands of dollar milling machines and cheap ones. Um, but it didn't affect the performance at all. I didn't need that little corner. It was just a test really anyway got a picture of it uh, insulated. This is how I've always insulated them. I've turned them upside down and wrapped them in wi adhesive windows uh, insulation tape and then on top of that electrical tape. Uh, it seems far easier to, to insulate the block than it is the motherboard so that's what I do and uh, there's a few obviously temperature sensors out the bottom and the side of that telling me the temperature of the cold plate and the hot plate. And here is a picture of it mounted in my uh, computer at the time, which I think was an Intel Q6600, possibly 00, um, which was a great overclocker in the day. And uh, this block worked really well. So much so that I could push my motherboard so, so hard that my motherboard eventually went up in smoke, quite literally smoke, because I overclocked it and put so much voltage into it. But uh, this was definitely my first water block, and it was extremely successful in my opinion, and went on to encourage me to do a whole bunch of other blocks. And that's what we've got for today, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and please subscribe. We're going to be doing a whole bunch more of these and other things once I've finished doing these. Thanks, guys. Bye.